<sighs> wow. All this sunlight is actually intrusive. All right, never could figure out how to do that. All righty. So, it's your girl, Miss Diva, and um, I'm actually doing better this morning. Drank some water. It's, you know, chilling. So, you know, off to a good start. Um, I have a couple of questions in the box, and um, good morning, Michelle. Before I get into those, hey, Eric, good morning. I just want to say um, I was asked to watch a video yesterday and to weigh in on it. Honestly, I did watch the video, and it angered me. So... Because of the format of my show, good morning, Ray. Um, not going to address it here, but I will address it this evening when I get off work, um, because I think it's important. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna just, you know, I did speak with the person that asked me to watch the video, but I do want to weigh in because I would like you guys to weigh in as well and also it's one of those topics that gets pushed under the rug a lot and it needs to be talked about because it's very real um, trying to get out of the sun um, first question on the board um, it's a young lady out in Tennessee she says my boyfriend is constantly asking me for money and we're not talking about five ten dollars here we're talking hundreds of dollars hundreds of dollars when I finally got brave enough to tell him, no, I can't do it, he dumped me. Well, Miss Tennessee, that should tell you something right there. It wasn't you, apparently, he was interested in. He, he had a financial need and you were able to fulfill that. Now, I'm not saying it's not okay to loan your significant other money, but according to her letter, she was loaning and loaning and loaning and she was never getting any of the money back. And as she, as he got more comfortable with asking for money, the amount started to be more and more. Um, so my thought on that is this, um, first off, I'm not borrowing money from <laughs> my significant other. I know if I asked him for money, he would give it to me. That's not a problem. But that's just not something that I tend to do. Um, I've been in relationships where they've asked for money for one thing or another, and I've done it, and I ended up regretting it because it was almost like the same situation. I would loan them money and never get it back or get attitude if there was a point in time where I couldn't give them anything. So... My thing is this, know the person you're with. Um, never loan anything that you can't afford to give away. Right, exactly, Ray. A real man doesn't leech, but a real woman doesn't either. And I know some of those too. Y'all call those gold diggers. Hey, Kenneth. Uh, men can be gold diggers too. Just saying. Um, so... Um, if he did leave you, trust me, he did you a favor. Leave him alone. Don't go. You know how we do sometimes. Don't go after this guy. I look at the love. Don't go after him. Let him go. Let him move on to his next victim. Okay. As harsh as that sounds, there will be another one, I'm sure. So leave, just leave him be. And Michelle is saying, I've been there. I was with someone who quit his job after we were together. He expected me to buy everything. Then he wanted me to do our taxes with him so that if we broke up, he could take half of my house. Now, see, that that's that's one of them burning bed kind of brothers right there. You know, you know what I mean? You want to just light the bed on fire with him in it? Really? Who does that? Well, apparently somebody does that. That's not okay. I feel like a relationship should be a partnership. I want my man to be my partner. I want him to be my rock when I can't be my own, but allow me to do the same for him. However, that does not mean it's okay for you to take, 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 
be you a man or a woman and not give anything in return. That's that bull crap. Uh uh. Kenneth, I'm a socky when you're <laughs> Tell me I'm a gold digger. I go after EBT cards mostly. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> but no. Um, Michelle, nobody should have to deal with that. You know, when I think about the guys that I had, I can't even call them men. I've been with that did this same sort of a deal. I, um, I lost way more than I ever gained. And it's not that I was in the relationship for any sort of monetary gain or anything like that, but I lost big trying to help them. And I'm not willing to do that again because now in my life, I have way too much to lose. So I'm not willing to do that anymore. And then the second topic is a lot more serious. Um, it's a young lady actually in, hey, Teresa, in Quebec, Canada. So I have listeners up there too. She writes in because she's in an abusive relationship. She says he calls her names. He disrespects her. He, um, he's beaten her um, more than once and she's not sure how to get out of it um, whew. Uh, wow um, don't want to joke this one away um, first thing you need to do is leave um, the only problem with her leaving is she said that she doesn't really know if her family will help her because she's been estranged from them due to this relationship and you know that's one of the hallmarks of an abuser um abuse doesn't just i mean they don't just come right out of the bat just beating your ass excuse my language what they do is they create an environment where they feel where they make the abused feel like that's the best they're ever going to have or that nobody else cares about them. And the first thing they do generally is isolate. Um, they get you away from your family. They get you away from your friends. Oh, they don't care about you. Nobody's going to love you the way I do. Blah, 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 blah. To get, build that, that, uh, that comfort zone away from your family and friends. And then they attack your mental. Oh, you're stupid. You're fat. You're, you're too dumb to do this. You never do anything right. You know, then they start attacking your body afterward, you know, physically. Um, so abuse comes in stages. It doesn't just, they don't generally just come right out and start beating you. It comes in stages. Um, the first thing I'm going to suggest, and I hope you, you do get some help here because you really do need it, sweetheart, is to reach out to your family. Your family may not know what's going on, and if you talk to them, they may be willing to be there for you. They may be in a position to help you get out of this. Um, my thing is, you have to get out of this, because eventually it's going to escalate, and somebody's not going to come out of it alive. I've seen it. I worked many years in emergency rooms and trauma centers, and I've seen it way too many times. There's uh, programs out here where you can get some help, but I would start with family. Um, just because you're estranged now because of this relationship does not mean that they won't be there for you. So start there. Please keep in touch with me, okay? Let me know what's going on. I wish you were here because I'd be like, you know, I don't have a whole, I don't have a big home, but I would invite you in. Um, I've had very lengthy conversations with this young lady and today was the first day she was comfortable with me actually talking about this. I do wish you were here because I would definitely help you. But check into your, um, I don't know how your government works there, but check into that, see what resources are available to you, but you have to get out get a restraining order. Um, I know they're only worth the paper they're written on for the most part because that piece of paper will not stop a bullet, but it's a first step in the right direction to let him know that you're serious and that you're not going to do, you're not going to put up with this anymore. Um, the second thing I'm going to suggest, 
you know, if you can't go to family, find someplace safe to go. Don't let him know where you are. Hi, Loretta. Hey, Shalita. Don't let him know where you're going. Just go. While he's at work, just go. Um, just, I need you to be safe. I need you to be careful. But above all, I need you to get out of this relationship. I am generally the last person to tell somebody they need to end a relationship or they need to, you know, break up. You know, I'm the last person to do that. But in this instance, you need to for your own safety. She also has a young child. That child does not deserve this. Neither do you for that matter. So you need to take your baby and you need to run like hell. Go to the police. Go to your family. Just get out of the situation. Faith says, I've been there, done that. I'm a survivor. I left when he was at work. I did that too. I was um, in my early 20s and thought I was in love. Um, had an abusive boyfriend. He moved into my house, bought a new car, which I was paying for. It was just crazy. Actually, I was like 19 or 20. And um, one day I was coming. I got home late from work, got beat up. And after that, I'm like, you know what? I can't deal with this anymore. We were supposed to spend the weekend at his mother's house. I called my brother. I said, you know what, Al, I'm done. He said, what do you need me to do? I said, we're going to his mom's house. His mom lived about a mile from my mom. I'm like, I, 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 it, it's over. I, I can't do this anymore. We get over there while well, he's in the shower. You know, he did, you know, did what he did to me and he went and jumped in the shower. And um, I took my car keys, my house keys, off his car, off his key ring, hid them, put his stuff in the trunk of his car. We drove to her, his mother's house in the in the new car. And when we got there, I didn't see anybody. You know, I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I got to do this. When he went in the house, because I was supposed to bring all the bags in, I commenced to throwing all of his stuff on her front lawn. His mom's like, what are you doing? Which, of course, made him run out of the house. Like, what's going on? You know, he sees his stuff on the lawn. I'm like, I'm done. And he came after me. I started to run. He caught me by my hair and he started hitting me. And that, about that point, that's when my brother and his friend drove up and they were like, mm -mm, you want to fight? You're going to fight a man. And they handled that for me. Um, so... Um, he came to my house a few weeks later with a gun. Um, but his friend that brought him there realized what was about to happen. He was like, hey, no, 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 no. He called me and warned me. Um, so, but I'm still here. I'm 49. This happened when I was about 20. I'm still here. So you can get out of this. You can escape. I really wish you were here because I certainly would help you. Um, <laughs> but for that baby, you have to go. Let me know if I can help you in any way. I do have friends in Canada, so please let me know how I can help you. But God, please, you have to get out. You have to. Yeah, Michelle's saying they would give you full custody of the baby if you were in El Paso and she would gladly help you out. Um, I would too. Just let me know. Hey, Doug, that was my sweetheart. I'm sorry. Hey, Sharina. Um, <laughs> I'm going to inbox you when I'm done here, but yeah, we, we need to get you out of this situation. So hang in there. Um, but when he leaves, you leave, just get out. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, we will be praying for you. But yeah, we, we want you out of this situation. Nobody deserves that. Um, I got to get it together because I am at work. I got to go. Um, I'm going to be back this evening when I get off because, like I said in the beginning, I want to address the video that I was asked to watch yesterday because I think it's important. It's a very important topic. I know, I'm trying not to. <laughs> you know, I'm a big baby. I just don't like people hurting. And, you know, I, it's, 
<laughs> Especially with the baby and uh, okay, I gotta pull it together, but I'll be back this evening and then I'll be back tomorrow with some more questions. And um also tomorrow's Friday, so Love Unlimited Live. Um 11 to 2 on the East Coast, 8 p.m. till 11 on the West Coast. Um, like I said, I got to get it together. Got to. Um, Faith is saying, I fled with a two-year-old many a nights and drove around in my car because I was away from my family. I had no resources until I finally found, finally found counseling. My home has been a resource for many of young women in need. And she said, I cry like her. <laughs> You know, um, I have helped a number of women in this situation. Um, they didn't need to be in my home. Um, just they needed somebody and I was there. Um, no, I don't feel shame, Ray. <laughs> just this is a hard topic. Um, and, um, I will continue to do that. I really wish this young lady was here because I would take her. I mean, she's willing to come here. I will help her. I promise you that. I will keep you guys updated because um, she, she is messaging me now. So I'll keep you guys updated. Um, I'll update tonight, tell you guys what she's saying. And um, I will see y'all tomorrow. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> I gotta go. You guys be blessed. And thanks for watching.